All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me. Here today I am doing a piece of art totally and wholly comprised of dots. And when you combine dots in this manner, in this fashion, you have something, uh, an artistic uh, mechanism known as stippling. And uh, it's pretty cool and I enjoy it. You can take your time with it. Dot by dot, you can create varying degrees of solidity, as some say. When you put a bunch more dots closer together, it creates a darker area. Or if you're, you know, using ink or pigment that's lighter than the background, if you put a bunch of dots closer together, it creates a lighter area. I typically use black ink on white paper. Pretty classic, uh, straightforward approach, but you can mix it up as you see fit. It's just how I do it. So I just sat here putting dots on the paper uh, for quite a long time. Now, I'll get more into that later, but I just want to think about dots for a minute. And uh, I think back to my days in grade school when I was in dot class, and it, they really do have a pretty storied and rich history. I think it was back in the early 1800s when dots were invented. People were drawing lines, um, well, for most of recorded history, um, for all sorts of reasons. Drawing lines, telling people to get to one side of it, or just um, for people to sign on next to X's, stuff like that. Or even for art, if they felt like it. But then some people started to get a little bit more um, experimental with it. They started to make their lines shorter and shorter. And they started doing things um, similar to the modern day stippling called hatching. And sometimes they're hatching their lines crossed each other, and that made something called cross-hatching. Um, but sometimes, like I said, uh, people got a little bit bold. And uh, as their lines got shorter and shorter, they realized that if their lines started and stopped in the same place, it almost became something else entirely. Some artists dedicated themselves to this, this style of art and the style of line making, and they called it something else, right? And they called it, they called these lines dots, th these very short lines, right? And um, so, some artists made a name for themselves like this. So I think one of them was named uh, Guglio Campagnola, some Italian guy in the 1510s. He was making prints with these lines, um, print making and all this stuff. And then just a little bit later in the Wall Street Journal, people were making things called head cuts, Kevin Sprouls, and uh, people really like it. Later on after that, um, dots became uh, more popular in other areas of life. Some flowers started using them on their petals. Some, um, you know, like insects started infecting flowers and leaving little dots and little egg sacs right, that look like stippling, little dots, little natural collections of dots. Um, sometimes to, to leave a, a grip, something, some sort of texture on a, maybe a handle for something or an inclined portion of a sidewalk, there would be a little stippled area, or sometimes that's called knurling, I guess. That's a cool word. Say it with me. Knurling has a silent K at the beginning, which is also fun. Uh, but... Um, Maybe a slightly less interesting use of dots would be something like polka dots. Yes, I'll admit that it's interesting to look at sometimes and create a fun can create a fun effect on a, a dress or a bikini maybe, but there's not much variety with the dots, right? The whole point of polka dots is that all these large... Um, sometimes these dots get so big that you'd even consider them circles, right? And where that line lays... When a dot gets so big, when do you call it a circle? When do you call it a dot? I don't know. I'm not actually a dot scientist. I didn't actually um, partake in any uh, classes or any sort of higher learning in dot school besides grade school. Um, so I don't know. You have to maybe look that up um, on, on Wikipedia or something. But the whole point of, of, of polka dots is that all the, all the dots are the same size and evenly distributed, which is something that I, I use in my drawing here. You can see that you can create nice tones and textures by evenly distributing the dots. 
and I might, and, and sometimes it is, it is kind of like polka dots, but no, I like, I like the variations. You can create gradients, um, and even like things like Photoshop and stuff, they use gradients of dots, something called dithering, I suppose. I don't know, I think I have to brush up on my dot history. Anyways, anyways, the point is, uh, I took my time with this piece. I guess, yeah, excuse me, if I had to put an, an hour number on it, it would be about 60 hours to create this, 11 by 14 inch piece of paper. I don't know, I can't remember how big the piece of paper is. Is that even a reasonable paper size? 11 by 14, it sounds like a really weird size of paper, but I think that's what it was. But People always want to know how long a drawing took. I guess it helps them relate to it better, quantify it a little bit better in their mind. But I don't know if 60 hours really should mean anything to you. Um, obviously, if, as you're watching this footage, I skipped huge portions of it. Like, all this footage is not here recorded. I mean, I recorded most of it, but it's not all here. Right? I wasn't going to... I wasn't going to upload a 60 hour footage, video footage, you know, I wasn't going to up upload all of it, even though someone obviously will requ request that. And I, I wasn't going to include it all and fast forward all of it together because it would be so fast and dizzying to watch. And just because something took a long time to make doesn't mean it's inherently good or impressive. Like what if it took someone 60 hours to draw a stick man and they're just a very slow worker. Sometimes I am a very slow worker, like I made a lot of this while I was streaming, and so I would stop and talk. I'm not a very efficient worker when I'm streaming because I stop to chat so much, but I think it is key. And I think it is a very important thing, something that helped me that I was streaming while I made this and I would stop to chat with the chat so much because that saved my wrist. When I was making this stippling piece, people was always asking like, Peter, you know, doesn't it hurt your wrist? Doesn't it hurt your hand? Doesn't your wrist hurt? Like, Peter, my wrist hurts just looking at that. And I, I experienced almost no discomfort while making this, even while drawing for 10 hours at a time, because, um, not on purpose, but just because I was taking so many little breaks. I would draw for maybe even only 30 seconds to two minutes at a time before taking a 30 second or two minute break, right? And I think that's really important. The only time that I really started feeling any discomfort, which was usually right here on the front of my wrists and my tendons right there, was when I started drawing without streaming. And then I had no distractions and I could go at it and I wouldn't take any breaks. I would just get really absorbed in the dot making. Then I'd have, to, I would only really stop because my hand would start hurting. So I think, just like in a lot of areas of life, it's important to take breaks. Don't push yourself too hard. Because if you work too hard one day, you might not be able to work the next day or do whatever you want the next day, even if you want to, right? Some days I had to take a day off just because I drew too many dots the previous day. And I was like, I really want to work on this, but my hand hurts a little bit from yesterday. And I know if I push myself today, I really will regret it tomorrow. So pace yourself. Take breaks, you know, get up, stretch, do a little Pedro yoga. I'm doing some right now. It's good for you. Anyways, have fun with the lines, the dots, however short or long your lines and dots are, it's fine. And uh, yeah, obviously my, I didn't plan out how this was gonna look ahead of time. I just start making dots and they start forming little clouds and then I kind of see the, the lines, the, the shapes forming in there and then kind of flesh them out as they appear. It's almost as exciting to me to, to, to see what happens, to see what, how it's going to all appear in there. And I, like I, I don't know as much as the people watching know what's going to happen. Anyways, goodbye everybody. I don't have anything else to say. So this is Peter Draws uh, signing off until next time. See you later. Goodbye.